to God about it. But this morning, it was very weird. I was there ranting in my house, and I was talking to the divine. Like, I won't talk to her like that on a norm. Like, tell her everything that is on my mind, and I was just talking and talking and talking and talking. And she was like, let me pray for you. I just looked at her, and I just go, and the Spirit told me, that is pride, do pride. And I went back to meet her. I was like, okay, let's pray together. And honestly, like, when she, she actually prayed for me. I did not pray. Like I, it's not like we prayed together. And when she was like when she was done praying for me, like I felt this peace and joy. There is nobody that cannot pray for you. <laughs> I just want to thank God because no, God bless you, divine, and I love you so much. Praise God. Please, the next Buddha come. Just go straight to the point. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for um the Ghanaian competition we had yesterday. Hallelujah. Okay, so we came out second. And I just want to thank God because I'm not really a competition person. I don't like competitions. I run away from competitions. But I want to thank God. When I was there, I was like, hey, God, oh, for your glory, oh, don't come and disgrace us. <laughs> I just want to thank God. You know, we came out second. And it's really, you know, <laughs> it's really, you know, like, it's, you know, I can tell my daddy, daddy, I went for a competition and we were second. I want to thank God. May his name be praised. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, I really want to thank God for a new year in my life. Last week, last week, Tuesday, last week, Tuesday, I was plus one. I really want to thank God for growth in every area, like, Spiritually, financially, um, also like I've seen, I've seen a lot of changes. Yeah, I just, I just want to thank God for everyone that wished me happy birthday. God bless you. Thank you for those that you know. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Seems I'm the last person, so I'll take my time, okay? How many of you are happy to be here today? Tell one another I'm happy to see you. Amen. Okay, I want to thank God for my life. Um Amen. Yeah, I want to thank God for my life, for everything that has been going on. Yeah, you guys don't understand, but a lot has been going on. And looking at me from home, I don't think I can handle this like before. But now, like I wake up sometimes and be like, Prince, oh, wow, you're strong. You're a man. I came here a boy, but now I'm a man. Amen. And I want to thank God for some people in my life. Ruben, stop stretching. I'm not coming. I want to thank God for Ola. Ola has been very nice. Doesn't know how to show emotions, but <laughs> he tries. Though. And every one of you, Blingy, Evo, Floris. Okay, Jennifer. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank God for um, the life he has given me. Okay. The life he has given me for my family, for um, bringing me all the way from Nigeria. Place. for this school, for every one of you, for the friends I met here, for, for everything, everything has been so good to me. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank God for <laughs> I want to thank God for what God has done for me. 
as in <laughs> my family, the gifts of life, there is um, a big change, like a transformation. <laughs> <laughs> So I thank God for everything. I just want to give him the praise. I'll give another. Uh, um, praise the Lord. Um, my name is Genesis Idewar. Um, I want to thank God for my life. Um, I traveled um, from Nigeria. I think that was Thursday, and I arrived. Um, Sunday, 4 a.m., right? Praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank God for bringing me here safely, and also thank God for the friends I met here. I actually wasn't expecting, like, people to be that friendly here, but the way I saw it, it was, it was nice. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to thank God for bringing me here for my family and my friends. Those of you that don't like giving your testimony, we'll be fishing you out one by one. <laughs> Praise God. There's not only when God does something so big for you being alive is a testimony. Hallelujah. So we have um, a video to watch. And please pay attention. Be attentive. You know, watch her remain blessed. Praise God. and think about God. Many people are thinking about God today because we've seen that science does not have an answer to all of our problems. We are seeing that technology cannot solve all of our problems. And so thousands of young people in Europe and in America are beginning to talk about God. Some of them are going to India to see if they can find peace in their hearts. Some of them are going and studying yoga and they're going into all sorts of different sects and groups searching for God. Some of them are going out into the desert and sitting under the stars and watching the stars. Have you ever wondered about God? Someone asked me at a university one day, can you prove God exists? And I answered, no. I cannot put God in a test tube. I cannot put God in a laboratory and say, here's God. How do I know that God exists? All the evidence seems to indicate that he does. I look up in the starry sky and I say, there must be a God. I look at the beautiful nature round about me and I say, there must be a God. I see the birth of a baby. Gary Player was telling us yesterday how he saw the birth of his last child. And he said, as I watched that, I knew that there had to be a God. But there's another reason. Deep in your heart, you have a conscience. And your conscience tells you there must be a God. Something down inside tells me there must be a God. And the Bible tells us that this God is the creator of all the universe. In Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now in that passage in Genesis 1, there is no explanation, there's no attempt to prove God, it just says, in the beginning, God, because everybody believes in God. Oh, but you say, I've met some atheists. You met some atheists that hadn't had any real trouble yet. But you find a person who claims he's an atheist and let someone announce to him that he has terminal cancer, and you'll say, my God, help me or he get into a battle or get into a difficult spot, he'll say, my God, help me. Yes, all men know that there must be a God. He is the creator. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Now the Bible tells us God is a spirit. 
God doesn't have a body like yours. If God had a body like yours, he would have to be in one place at one time. But God doesn't have a body like yours. And God can be in Africa. He can be in Asia. He can be in Europe. He can be in America all at the same time. He can be on a planet. He can be on the moon at the same time. I've talked to some of those astronauts that went to the moon. And they told me that they knew as they went around the moon, there must be a God. I talked to some of the prisoners of war from Vietnam just a few days before I came on this trip. I talked to those first prisoners that came back to the United States and they told us in those prison cells for eight years in Vietnam, they knew there was a God. The Bible tells us that God is unchanging. He never changes. Fashions change. Every part of our culture and life changes. And vast changes are underway throughout the world. Fashions change, culture changes, technology changes, but God never changes. The Bible says, I am the Lord God, I change not. The Bible says, there is no variableness, nor shadow of turning with God. God has not changed in thousands of years. 10,000 times 10,000 years from now, God will be the same. God is from everlasting to everlasting. God does not change. The Bible also tells us that God is a holy God, absolutely holy. The Bible says, thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil. Thou canst not look on iniquity. God is holy and righteous, and you'll never understand God. You'll never understand about God, and God's dealing with us until you understand that God is absolutely pure, and God is absolutely holy, and God cannot even look upon sin with any approval whatsoever. And then the Bible tells us that God is a God of judgment. In Ecclesiastes 12, 14, the Bible says, God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There's a judgment day coming. You're going to be there if you're outside of Christ. And every secret thing will be brought to light. Everything that you hid, everything that you did that you didn't think anybody knew about, all of your thoughts, all of your motives, all of your intents, all of your actions are on God's computers. And God is keeping a record and someday you're going to have to stand before a holy God and give an account at the great judgment day. Jesus said, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof on the day of judgment. The apostle Paul said in his great sermon at Athens, he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world by that man, Christ Jesus. There's a day of judgment coming. He has appointed a day. It's all set. You're going to be there. And every secret thing that you've ever thought or done will be flashed on the scoreboards up in heaven at the judgment. And the whole world will see what you really were down inside. God is a God of judgment. But the Bible also teaches that God is a God of love. That God loves I'm glad that's in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That God is a God of love and mercy and grace. And that God loves everybody. I don't care who you are. He has the hairs of your head numbered. He sees the sparrow fall. He's interested in you and he loves you. Now there are several Greek words that are translated love. Eros means sensual love, sexual love. Phileo means friendship love, the love that I would have for a friend. But when the writers of the New Testament were trying to find a word that would describe the love of God, they invented a new word, a copy, the divine love, a love that we cannot know outside of God. There is no love that you can think of in human relationships comparable to the love that God has for you and that God has for me. God loves you. You say, but Billy, I don't deserve such love. I'm a sinner. I've broken God's law. I failed him a thousand times. I know that's the beauty and the greatness and the thrill of God's love. That no matter what you've done, 
He loves you. For God so loved the world. God loves you. And God loved us so much that he gave his son. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's quickly stand up as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We give you all the glory and praise. And just open your mouth this morning and just begin to lift up your heart into the mighty hands of God. Begin to come against every form of destruction, even in this short time that we are going to listen to the word of God. And open your mouth and pray, Lord, I receive your word. I refuse to go back the same. Your word is bringing light and life into me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the vessel that you used to bless our lives today. We we'll give you all the glory and praise. May your word come, O oh God, undiluted. And may your word not return to you void. Let our ears be attentive to your word. Let our hearts be open to receive. Thank you for everything that you've done. And let your name be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's welcome our brother, brother, Dotson, to give us the word. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Praise God. As I finished my time, yeah. Praise God. Before we start, I would like us to, you know, um, go in with an atmosphere of, of love. Let's stand up. Let's just welcome one another into the presence of God. Let's welcome one or two people. Tell them you are welcome to the house of God. I love you. God loves you. Share the love. Share the love. Just throw it. Just throw it out there. Just throw it out. Like, throw the, throw the love out. Amen. Praise God. Now, this is something you're supposed to do each and every time you come to the presence of God. Love you to Perpetua. God bless you. Love you Perpetua. I lost me in this, in this, this building. Amen. Praise God. Blessing doesn't even love anybody. <laughs> Amen. Um, praise God. So today's topic says the fate of the foreigner. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. We bless you, Heavenly Father. We ask, so that you teach us in your word today. But I will pray that your word is going to pierce our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus and going to bring forth growth in the mighty name of Jesus and bring forth good fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our and prayers. Amen. Praise God. So let's quickly open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 to 13. That's Genesis. Genesis, how are you? Good. You should be helping us with the Bible today, right? Will you do us the honor? Hmm? Matthew chapter 8. I don't know, I love that name, Genesis. Praise God. Uh, don't we love the name? Praise God. Matthew chapter 8, are you there? Okay, read it. From verse 5 to 13.
Thank you so much. Praise God. We all know the story of the centurion, right? I think this class is too. Praise God. I've seen all your faces. Ah, I'm shy. <laughs> I think I need to remove it. <laughs> Praise God. I think Stephanie understands. My food be like, you are seeing all the... <laughs> No, no, I can't do this. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> so we know the story of the centurion, right? <laughs> Amen. So he was a well-known, let me say a well-known personnel in the, in, the, in the country, in the town. But then, he had a servant, healed with palsy. And he had run, I'm very sure he had run, like, north and south, east and west of, east, east and west of the town. And um, he couldn't find someone to, a doctor or a healer to heal, to, to heal his, 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 his servant. And then he heard of Jesus Christ. And he did what? He ran to Jesus. And afterwards, Jesus spoke to him. Let, let's go to our house. Let's go to our house together. But he said, he said something. He said, I'm not worthy of you coming to my house. Praise God. Many of us, before we give our life to Christ, we are in so many things. We used to do that. We used to do this. We used to lie. We used to thieve. We used to... Thief, we used to um, we are humanizers. We used to um, go clubbing. We used to drink. We used to smoke. We used to do everything and everything. And then, at that moment of our lives, we felt okay. Nobody is worthy to to save us. We don't want anybody saving. Praise God. But then we received Jesus. How is that possible? What made it possible? Huh? The Holy Spirit, praise God. The Holy Spirit, that is the key. The Holy Spirit made it possible. The Bible says we are saved by, by grace, true, true faith. The Holy Spirit ignited the faith in us. Praise God. And today we are talking about faith. Faith of the foreigner. Okay, let's define faith. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 1. Chapter 11, verse 1, it says what? The substance of what things hoped for. The evidence of things not in. So that means faith is not faith if you've seen it. Praise God. If you've seen it physically, then what you are, what you are trying to, I don't know, to possess, I don't mean, it's just logic. Praise God. So if it's, if it's seen already, you can't classify it as faith. But then, there's an evidence of sight with faith. Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence there is seeing it before seeing it. You get what I'm saying? The evidence is the spiritual scene. This man had faith. He, was, he, he, he must have left, I don't know, he, he must have left, maybe he traveled all the way from, from Ghana to Ukraine. Looking for Jesus, just for example. And he saw it. Praise God. Well, many at times we believe, we believe um, if you are not a believer, then you don't have faith. No. Unbelievers don't have faith too. Praise God. Unbelievers have faith. But then, what is, their basis of, what is the basis of their faith? That's the question you need to ask yourself. The base of our faith as Christians is what? Christ. Praise God. It's God. Now, he, he saw, he already saw it, but he never had it, like, I don't know, literally. So he did what? He, he sought God. And God brought it, brought, him, brought it to him from his own imagination to life. Praise God. We say what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Meaning, if it is seen before, then it is not faith. It is just logic. That is, why people... That is why people laugh at you because their eyes are filled or are built to the spiritual. Uh, sorry? Their eyes are blind to the spiritual of which you already have your evidence. Faith sometimes can be unexplainable. Sometimes you can't explain faith. Hallelujah. Sometimes faith is not explainable. Let's continue. It says, um, faith as. Okay, I, I wrote down here. Faith as. 
as an adverb, as a spiritual adverb. Praise God. You know, most times we say faith, 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 and um, we find ourselves in some situations whereby we can't express faith. We can't just, at that moment, God is like, God is not into, like, God is nowhere to be found to us. Praise God. Today, I define faith as an adverb, meaning it comes, it's, it's, it's a word before an action. Praise God, right? Adverb is like the, the, the word that does what? Qualifies an, a verb. Praise God. Faith qualifies your action. Do you get what I'm saying? Hugo, come. Hugo is a businessman. I'm a businessman. Okay, Hugo is um, a normal businessman. I said just ordinary businessman. Me, I'm a, I'm a Christian businessman. Of course. Hugo <laughs> wakes up every morning to plan his business. He calls his buyers. He, okay, he will say tanker, right? Or the ship, the container, yes. He calls, he calls his containing company or his container company. And uh, me too, I do the same thing. Praise God. But on this faithful day, Hugo woke up in the morning, prepared everything, how the day supposed to go. The buyers from Germany, from China, from London, from everywhere. Me too, I did the same thing. Praise God. But then, something was supposed to happen on that day. Ugo was, it was, okay, he, he's very happy that something's going to happen. Like, okay, this, this today, my, my market price is going to, like, skyrocket. Praise God. I mean, at the same time, I also, have, I also believe that my market price is going to skyrocket. Praise God. For me, I prayed about it. I had faith. But Ugo, being that the market price was, was like, okay, it was a bit low yesterday. So his own belief is on the logic that because the market price was low yesterday, it's going to rise today. But me, okay, though I already know too that the market price was already low, and I believe that it's going to rise today. Praise God. But me, I specifically prayed for the market price to rise. Praise God. Now, we are both performing actions, right? Ugo is performing action based on logic. But me, I'm performing my action. I'm calling my buyers based on what? Based on faith. You can say it's the same thing. But then what brings out the difference is the faith that I have. Praise God. Ugo, thank you. Amen. So faith comes before action. It brings the action to reality. Praise God. Faith is not logical. It benches logical. Praise God. I'm, I don't know how many of us watch this match here. We don't, we don't watch match. The match can come on, put your hands down. Come on, girls. Does, how many of us know Lukaku? The cock of my you <laughs> the cock of my united. Praise God. <laughs> Matia <laughs> Matia is like faith that benches Lukaku. Sometimes you start the match with Lukaku and he does nothing. But with, but then when you bring Matia in, he's going to score a goal or Rashford. Praise God. You're believing, you have a belief that when you bring, you see, there are some players, there are some players that are on bench, but you know that when these players player should come into the match, they are going to change the match. Example, Matia Rashford. Praise God. Now, let's go back. <laughs> Praise God. Well, so what I'm trying to say is, faith comes before action, and it benches logic. Praise God. You can write that down if you're doubting. Faith comes before action and it benches logic. Many people, you have over 7 billion people living on earth, we wake up each and every day. Yes, wake up. It is normal for us to wake up each and every day. It is logic for us to wake up, to sleep and wake up. But as Christians, it is not logic to us. We wake up because we know that our God wakes us up. Praise God. Our God has secured the night for us. Many people wake up every day because they feel, okay, um, it's my duty to wake up. It's not, it's not your right to wake up. Praise God. 
It is not your right to wake up. We wake up by faith. We live, the Bible says what? We live by faith. So faith is supposed to be a, an everyday something in every action that you make. Praise God. Um, okay, let's read from verse 5. It says, um, and, Jesus went, and Jesus was entered into Capernaum. There came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worried that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only. But speak the word only. Praise God. At that moment, he, was, he has been convicted. He says, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and go it, go and he go it, and to another, come and he come it, and to my servant, do this and he do it. Praise God. You can read from Hebrews. Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews. It's Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read out some, some um, heroes of faith to us. Hebrews chapter 11. You are there, you can read it. Okay, Hebrews chapter 11. Let's start from verse, from verse 5, from verse 4. It says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Praise God. The action was what? Offering the sacrifice. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see that and was not found because God had translated him for, before his translation, he had this testimony that he was, he pleased God. Bible says, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is what? It is impossible to please God. So as Christians, we need to live by faith each and every day. Verse 7, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to, to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir to the righteous, which is by faith. Praise God. Faith is not you receiving a promise and just sitting down. Praise God. Faith is not you hoping on something to come and then you are just, cross, you are just crossing your legs. Praise God. Your faith, write this down, your faith is supposed to be challenged each and every time. Example, David. David's faith was challenged. Praise God. And he took the challenge. So as Christians, we're supposed to take the challenge of exercising our faith each day. Otherwise, what is the end of the faith? You get what I'm saying? God has given us faith as an instrument. As Christians, faith is supposed to be an instrument that we work with each and every day. So if we don't use the instruments, then what is the, what, what is, what is the excess of the instrument at first? Our faith is always challenged in each and every day. But then we need to accept the challenge as Christians. We're supposed to just, okay, I have faith. Then what? Praise God. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, um, which he should, after receiving an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not going whether he went. The, the action there is what? Obedience. He went out. By faith, he sojourned into the land, okay? Well, verse 11, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. And delivered of a babe of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen. Point two, what are the qualities of faith? If you write it right down, first, faith intercedes. Prayer ministers, come here. Those words, faith what? Faith intercedes. We don't pray by our, by our own. I don't know, our own our might or strength or our own understanding or our own faith. Praise God. We pray by the faith God has given unto us. We don't pray because, okay, we feel it's, it's our duty to pray. We pray because we know that God has asked us to do what? To pray. Prayer ministry is a ministry of intercession. Hallelujah. It says, faith intercedes. Matthew chapter 8. Let's go back to Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 8, verse 6. And saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented. This, this, this man, okay, this day we'll say, okay, okay, um, if I was this man and my servant was sick, I'll just ask, I'll just ask people to just take him and just stream away. Praise God. No, seriously, sincerely speaking, because I can easily get another, another servant. <laughs> well, he did what? He interceded. Imagine, imagine, okay, let's say, Buhari. How many of us know that Nigeria had the election yesterday? Hallelujah. <laughs> this man is just exactly like Buhari. He's a soldier. He has soldiers under him, right? He's a military man. I mean, he's a military man. He's a military man. He has soldiers under him. Let's say one of Buhari's um, bodyguard is sick. Will they go to Pastor Yee Adiboye to, like, just Pastor Yee Adiboye, please, come and heal my, my servant? No. We just ask him, just bench this guy. Bring another person. Hallelujah. But then this man, first, he was, he was, he was compassionate. Praise God. So that's one thing we should also learn. Faith comes with compassion. Faith comes with compassion. Interceding for people comes with compassion. You can't intercede if you don't love. You can't intercede if you don't have compassion. Praise God. Faith comes with what? With compassion. So this man, had, he was so compassionate that he had to travel to meet Jesus Christ. He had to travel to meet Jesus Christ and intercede for his his grievously tormented servant. The centurion asked not for himself, but for his servant. Why? Because when his servant eventually got healed, this will also work for his goodness. If you're writing down, write this down. The centurion asked not for himself, but for his servant. Why? Because when his servant eventually got healed, this will work for his goodness. Faith intercedes. First quality of faith. B, faith loves, oh, sorry, faith has principles. Faith has principles. Verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he go it, and to, to another, come and he come it. And to my servant, do this and he do it. it. For, um, the sub point on that faith of principles, submission. Submission. Know how to walk under the authority. We call ourselves Christians. No, many a times we, 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 we don't get the... You know, I, was, I, was, I was preaching on, on Friday. I was telling my cell group members about the blessings of forgiveness. No, when I, when I, was, when I was meditating on this, but I was, my mind was, was blown out. Many of us, we are still blinded to the blessings. Let, let us not be distracted. Praise God. We are still blinded to the blessings that comes with forgiveness. In the sense that, like I explained to them, forgiveness is like a package. It's a gift. Praise God. I'm giving you this gift. It is your choice to accept or not to accept. Praise God. But at that moment when you accept, you're accepting everything that comes with this gift. Praise God. Likewise, forgiveness. God sent his only begotten son to do what? To die for us on the cross of Calvary. To restore us back to the relationship that was once lost. Praise God. And this package of forgiveness has so many things. It has blessings. It has grace. It has excellence. It has light. It has favor. It has everything. Praise God. But many at times we are still blinded to all these blessings that package is forgiveness. Likewise, the authority of a believer. I don't know. Believers, sometimes I just wish I just wish we can just maybe go back to heaven and come back to it. Hallelujah. It says submission. Know how to walk under authority. You see, God has given us authority that that is undescribable. Praise God. The Bible says, if you would have faith, no doubting, if you say to this mountain, be you moved. No matter times we, we think, okay, this thing has happened, like it has happened in the past, so 
I beg, it's, it's, it doesn't seem so visible to happen again. No, you can see how it will still happen. Praise God. Believers, believers are like, uh, okay, these, these days believers are like, um, how do I put it? We are like, I don't even know the example to use now. Okay, we are there, but then we are still blind. Praise God. We know God, but we are still blind. Aha, example, just like our chemistry in secondary school. We know our chemistry, but then it's still abstract. It's, it's, it seems blind to us. Praise God. You get what I'm saying? Have you ever read chemistry? Like, you know that, yes, I read this thing very well. Like, you studied very well for it. And then on that exam, there's like, you never read it. Praise God. These days, Christians, that's how we are. We need to understand the authority God has given unto us. Um, second point, that's a point. Obedience, know how to use the authority. Which authority are we talking about? The authority of a believer. You see, this, this um, centurion, he understood his authority as, as, as a soldier. Praise God. He understood his authority. He knew. He said, even said it. He said, For I am a man under authority, having soldier under me. And I say to this man, Go and he go it. And to another, Come and he come it. And to my servant, Do this and he do it. it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to him that, that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. How many of us can, can, you, can, you, you, can you beat your chest and say, I know the authority that I have in Christ? Praise God. Can, can we beat our chest and say, I know the authority I have in Christ? Okay, I'm not into Christians here. Praise God. So that means today we know the authority we have in Christ. You know the authority, what, your, what authority do you have in Christ? Fatima. There are plenty. Tell me one of them. <laughs> Praise God. This man was boasting. He was boasting. Have you ever met someone that is boasting to you before? Is who can boast? Ha! Hmm. When is who is explaining cars to you like this? Oh my God. Is who be like, hmm. If I undo that car like this, your friends don't do that. 120, 150, 180. I was just going. Ugh. Praise God. Why? Because he understood everything that pertains with cars. When is he telling you about cars? Like all these new cars. Hey, uh, Mazda. Sorry, is it Mazda or Benz? Uh, Mercedes Benz. S, S, this one. C class, E class. He knows everything. That's the man that knows his authority. In cars, praise God. He knows, no, why? Because he has studied it. He has had experiences with it. Praise God. So that moment, he's able to boast. See, do you know that boasting, see, when you know something, when you know something, you are not actually boasting. Praise God. When you know something, when you can back up what you are saying, at that moment, it's not like you are boasting. Oh, don't let me. Okay, it's not like you are um you are making the others to be inferior. Praise God. Except if you now want to make them inferior. But at that moment, you are explaining because you have more than enough inside of you. Like it's burning out. Like it's it's erupting. It's overflowing. Praise God. You get what I'm saying? So at that moment, you won't say it is boasting. It is just natural for you to give out. Hallelujah. It is natural for you to get out. Because, why? Because you have more inside of you. Likewise, as a Christian, authority doesn't come with you just being a Christian. It comes with you going back to that secret place. It's, it comes with, you know, understanding more of God, studying your word, praying for more and more encounters with God. Because it is out of these encounters that you can, 
you know, go outside there and even talk to someone about Christ. It is out of this account that you can go outside there and share your testimonies with people and they will believe you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, next, it says, um, consecutive. Okay, yeah, consecutive. Faith, faith of principles. Third sub point says consecutive. It goes step by step till you see the results. Faith goes step by step until you see the results. See, faith is the language of the spiritual world. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak thy word only, and thy servant shall be healed. Like I said before, he never, he never saw, like he never knew it would happen. But he already saw it. Praise God. Literally, he never had the, the word of God. The, 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 he never saw it. Praise God. But then he already knew that he, it would happen. So faith brings what? The spiritual to the physical. It's the language that connects the spiritual world and the physical world. Praise God. Faith cannot be in silence. No. Faith cannot be in silence. Um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. Then when Jesus heard it, he married and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Faith cannot be in silence. Point D says, faith receives, accepts the fulfillment of the promises. See, there's a difference between receiving and accepting. Praise God. You can receive something, but not accept it at the same time. Faith receives, accepts the fulfillment of the promises. 